One thing I want to say about crop circles is most people do not understand what they are. They are energy vortex motors put in a ley line system to balance the planet. Most of the crop circles appear around Stonehenge. And Stonehenge is the main control panel to keep the planet in balance. So when it's something is out of line along a grid meridian, a crop circle appears simply to put that meridian back in balance. So they're very necessary. It's like a homeopathic for the Earth. And basically, you, because you have control of the Earth motor, can ask for a certain crop circle to heal the planet in a certain way. An example, when we had COVID, the second crop circle that year was a, 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 an antidote for COVID. It was the COVID back cell itself. And so you could take that crop circle, drop it over a nursing home, drop it over a school, and you could clean up the COVID. The only way that you could access the earth motor is through prayer. That is why the Illuminati cannot access the earth motor. And that is why we have control of it. How many of you realize you feel you have control of the earth motor? And you should be using it because right now, as I said last night, they are trying to destroy our atmosphere to make us sick and we can change the frequency. An example, <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you, Bruce and I started doing Holy Grail Vortex work and I took him out to the old F F FCC during the Second World War <clears throat> and during the early, late 40s, or early 30s, late 30s and early 40s. We had one of the three monetary stations for the federal communication system. And I was eight years old and my father took me out there because he was a doctor and the man had appendicitis. He, they were Cubans and they had all kinds of monetary stations and they were monitoring the submarines during the Second World War. And that is just nine miles from the center of our etheric pyramid. So we have control of the grid through that way. And what we did, what Bruce and I did, is we had smoke. They were burning fires up in Canada, and that smoke was coming down, making people sick. Doug Benjamin said he couldn't even see across the lake. I mean, you guys remember the smoke? Is that better? So basically, what we did is we got into our frontal lobes, got into our hearts, did the Holy Grail Vortex, and asked that the smoke be transmuted, not, not taken away, be transmuted into something that would benefit mankind instead of harm mankind. The next day, there's no smoke. In this area, there hasn't been smoke since we did that. That is having control of the earth motor. So that is what we want you guys to figure out. And that is why we're trying to do a lot of meditation during this program. Because it's important that we, we have control. We have been given the, the Holy Grail Vortex. Now to create a temple, you have to create energy going in two directions. That is why we have a counterclockwise vortex and a clockwise vortex. Any time that you build a building that has a counterclockwise vortex and a clockwise vortex, you can create a temple. That's the only way you can create a temple. Okay? Now, we have an obelisk and we have a pyramid. Okay? This is a down shoot obelisk. That means it goes counterclockwise. The pyramid is both clockwise, counterclockwise. The three-sided pyramid is a clockwise pyramid. So we have created that here on this land. And that is how you create a temple. And we are the temple of Saqqara. And I'm going to tell, I'm jumping around. If I get lost, if you get lost in 1981, we went with Doug Benjamin and the land is rising. Dottie Nonman was there, right, Dottie?
we went to Egypt. And what? Yep, they're doing the bowls. I thought it was the mic humming. Sorry, go ahead. We went to Egypt. Now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, I know. They went out to, they didn't have, they, ha, they brought 200 people along. They didn't have the money to finish the trip. So they took us out to Saqqara in the morning and left us there. 200 people. That was 1981. The buses left at noon. Half the people went back. But half the people were left out there. And Doug was at a platform of ISIS. And he was levitated. And he said, Mother Earth is dying. Mother Earth is dying. Mother Earth is dying. So from that situation, we came back, created our seminars, and we've been doing them for 43 years. And we call them now the Temple of Saqqara. So that's how the Temple of Saqqara was created. Because in 1981, we were left out there. And we were, there were eight people standing on a, on a platform called the Platform of Isis. And Doug started levitating. And that's what he said. Now I forgot, do you want to add something? This is a classic example of when God is orchestrating something, you might feel in the moment that, oh my gosh, what happened? Why do I deserve this? But out of them being left and trying to figure out that frustration, how are we going to get back to our hotel? The plan and and the thought came for them to start Saqqara that they needed. Um, had they not been left there, Doug may not have received that message, and they as a collective may not have said, we need to do something about that, and what can we do? And Divine dropped the thought for Mary to start the conference. So from that moment of chaos came forward 43 years of healing, grace, and wisdom. Saqqara itself was a teaching place. I mean, go back to the earth. In the time of Atlantis, the North Pole had a pyramid. The South Pole had a pyramid. There were thousands of pyramids all over the planet. And the controller of the North Pole, according to Kenneth Kelly, blew up the North Pole pyramid. That cracked the earth and created the Atlantic Ocean. If you look at South America and Africa, they fit together. So that created the Atlantic Ocean. Now, <clears throat> since there were pyramids all over the planet, there were people called the t controllers of the rods of Ptah, and they, they had run the pyramid system. So they activated the rest of the pyramids. It took them 54 years to build a wheel weight. That is why the Great Pyramid is in the middle of the landmass. You put the landmass together, they build a pyramid. It's like a car a wheel. When it's out of balance, it wobbles. If it would have kept on wobbling, the planet would have gone out of orbit. So secure car itself is in the middle of the land of Asher. That's why they built the Great Pyramid where it was. Does this all make sense to you? <clears throat> so that was in the middle of the land mass. And it took them 54 years. And what Saqqara itself was, was a gathering of these people who had the rods of Ptah. If you go to Egypt, if you go to the museum, you could stand out in front, and they had skull caps on, and they had rods with hooks in the middle. Now, four men could carry a two-ton block down a walkway. They, <clears throat> that's why they built walkways from the Great Pyramid to the quarries. They'd stick that rod in a platform. And you guys know what music was played? Anybody? Green sleeves. Why was green sleeves played? 
because we were using heart chakra energy. And the energy that comes out of the heart is green. So their arms grow green. That is why we are the sister and the brotherhood of the Emerald Fire, because we use our hearts to manifest the frequency, which is the sisterhood and the brotherhood of the Emerald Fire. So that's where we get our name from. <clears throat> Do you want to add something? So unconditional love vibrates at the color of emerald green. So when you are in your heart space and you are connected um, clearly and fully with divine I am and you are that channel, actually you are the extension of divine I am, you will glow green. So there, um, when you're doing your healing work, uh, there are pictures um, out there where, for me, it, my hands and the halo around is an emerald green. It's one of the reasons why Mary Magdalene and the sisters wore um, green cloaks to help um, hide when they were in the healing energy that they would glow and emanate emerald green. So it is possible when you are working that the emerald green will come up for you and your patient. So sometimes they see it with their eyes closed. Sometimes you see it with your eyes open. Sometimes it's captured on film. So move when you move into that unconditional loving space, the divine I am, you will vibrate emerald green, and that's the healing energy. Now Gail and I have gone all over the planet one time in 2015, right? Two Templar Knights stood in front of my bed. They said, you must go to England. I had no idea why I had to go to England. So I call up Gail, because she's usually my travel companion. And I said, we got to go to England. Well, fortunately, we had a friend named Jenny that lived in, in Brighton. And she said, well, she'll put us up for a week. We rented a car. She made reservations. So we went to England. When I got there, I had met a man named Duncan in another one of my trips. And Duncan came down and picked us up at the airport. And we went to Brighton, which is bright because it was one of the largest vortex generators in England. And they had a fountain downtown. So we went to the fountain. And Duncan came up and said, see that Ferris wheel over there? And I said, yeah. He said they, the World Olympics was in 19, 2015, and that w Ferris wheel, they had built 13 Ferris wheels all around England, pointing at the Olympic Stadium. If you go back to the stadium itself, it had a pyramid at the top of that stadium, and they had 13 pyramids, 13 Ferris wheels. Now, Ferris whales are what? Vortex generators. They had ordered thousands of body bags for the Olympic Games that year. They put missiles on top of all the buildings around. I don't know what they were going to do, but I feel we stopped that. So with the Ferris wheels, when it's rotating, the energy comes straight out, and that is called... Soliton. Yeah, yeah. I was just seeing, because we've been talking about this for years, just seeing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and so all the energies were going along, and they were activating the grids. And the Holy Grail Vortex activates the grid. We talk about um, being keepers of the grid and activating the grid. And when we do the Holy Grail Vortex, the last thing we do is send our prayers out through the grid. So we can access, when we access the earth motor and we access the grid, when Mary says we have controls, because we can reach down and tap that into the energy of the original grid, go through the imposed grid and tap the energy of the original energetic grid. And we can send our healing prayers and our, um, and our energy to, um, to go out through the earth. And if you see the... Um, ley lines around um, around the earth. It's just these little 
you know, cross. It wraps the earth. So wherever you are, you're the point of light, and you send your energy out along, along the grid line. You can do so because you are energy. You are all energy beings. We are energy beings. Everything is energy. We, get, we are condensed energy, but nonetheless, we are energy, and therefore, we have the ability to tap into the grid lines, and we can send our prayers and that healing energy out. I do not know why the Illuminati can't do this, but apparently they can. And that is why everywhere we go, you can stand and put up a medicine wheel or do the Holy Grail vortex, and what happens? Healing takes place. So with the, with the Ferris wheels coming back to that to finish that um, thought um, process. So with the Solitron and the energy going out, it also carried a program of, of thought process of fear and control and subdue. When we recognized that the Ferris wheels were putting out the negative energy, we asked Divine to show us how to uh, transmute that. So the Knights Templars came and we placed the four uh, Knights Templars with their shields out in the four directions. And we also, um, on the second try, because the first time, um, the powers that want to be, they recognized that we shifted the energy. So we asked, okay, so we had to shut down um, what we were doing because a flat ceiling cloud, um, very dark, came over us, um, lightning going, and it was like, Boop, become tourist. So we did, and we stopped, and then we communed again with Divine and asked how we could do that and not be um, noticed, so cloaking. So we cloaked the backside of the Ferris wheel so that the energy going through was divine love and harmony. And through the flower of life. Through the flower of life. So we put the flower of life so as the energy is coming through and the flower of life is amplifying that, it was going out. But the machine itself was working the way it was intended. Can anybody imagine what the first crop circle was that year? The flower of life. And it was late. It, the season was late, and they were wondering why there were no crop circles. And then we got to put um, the flower of life in front of the Ferris wheels, and the next day there was a flower of life in the first crop circle for the season. So we took that as... Um, uh, yeah, what is that? Confirmation. There we go. Of what we did. And what was interesting was we couldn't travel anywhere. Helicopters would fly along. With, and Gail said one time to me, You know, that guy has a gun. He goes like this and puts it back in the. And he had his legs hanging out the side window, following us down the road because we were going near Stonehenge. Right? So when. When we, coming back to the grid, then, in, in that story, so the Earth has its natural electromagnetic grid, and then the powers that want to be have imposed an artificial grid over the top that they monitor. So when we light workers come into our body and we um, come and raise our energy, we poke a hole in that grid, and then they have to come investigate it. So that's um, for many, many years um, when we um, raised our energy, the helicopters would show up um, very quickly. And if you noticed when we were um, coming out of the meditation today and everybody was synced up and the energy was high, that plane came over and did a little circle checking out where that hole was that just got opened up in the grid. So um, you can cloak yourself and, and you can do so just simply by asking because it's energy and then it is done. So cloaking your energy. But also we can say the Lord's Prayer. Yes. To before we start, and it's advisable to do that, to say the Lord's Prayer to protect yourself. When you're doing the Holy Grail Vortex, first of all, you must have intent. Then you must cloak yourself or do the prayer of protection. And ask permission. And then you have to ask permission. Because this is still a planet of free will. 
Somebody said, oh, I want to heal my sister. Do you have her permission? No. Then you can't do that. You have to have permission. Anybody have any questions? Cloak. <laughs> as soon as you think it, it's already done. What? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. She asked about cloaking. She wanted to learn more at, uh, about the cloaking prayer. And the prayer is simply that as soon as you think it to cloak yourself, it's already done because you have that energy in. So you can do your work and be um, stealth. And however um, that image is for you, you can utilize that. Um, it is um, just it, it truly you're reaching outside of yourself again thinking I have to say a certain um, prayer and do a certain um, um, uh, protocol to say to do cloaking but because we are energy as soon as you think something you have shifted the energy and the tachyon field and and the subtle organizing energy field all of that comes into play and it starts to manifest so as soon as you think you are manifesting so when you think cloaking you're already cloaked I I'm gonna tell, say this we received the Holy Grail vortex while I was in France in the in to, uh, 1975, I think. The year 2000 was coming up. 1996. What, 1996. The year 2000 was coming up. The Illuminati was building a huge Millennium Dome, an amusement park for kids in London's harbor. It was a big dome the size of two football fields with all kinds of antennas coming out of it. They were going to put that on the Greenwich Mean Line, and they were going to cap the Great Pyramid. And of course, if you would go back to the year 2000, what was supposed to happen with the computers? So <clears throat> if the Illuminati wanted to cloak the, the Great Pyramid and send the energy up to the Millennium Dome, they would have to stop the Earth motor for a blink of an eye. What would happen to the computers on the planet? So that's what year 2000 was all about. And we were given the Holy Grail Vortex to stop that. Because what they had done is they had gone to 15 cathedrals and in their bell towers they had sent up and radio stations so they could transfer the energy from the Great Pyramid to the Millennium Dome in London's Harbor. For 90, 96, 97, 98, 99, I was sent to those cathedrals to change the energy and the frequency so they couldn't do that. And my Knights Templar stood in there so when they were going to transfer the energy, the shields would have stopped it. This is the way we, I have been asked to work. So when we saw the Ferris wheels, the first thing we did is we put four Knights Templar in front of the Ferris wheels. So as that turned, they could not send the energy to the pyramids on top of the great of the of the dome of the stadium. Do you have any questions? Can you see what they have done? And Gail and I have continued to go all over, right? Yes. Do you need some water? Yeah. So uh, going back to the grids and, and energy. So the core of the earth is magnetic, uh, the center of the earth and the core, and the crust of the earth is electro. So as um, the spin um, of the earth happens, then that creates an electromagnetic field. So we are all electromagnetic frequencies and our brains are electromagnetic chemically. So the chemical um, and the substance that we take and the chemicals, natural chemicals in our body then create a spark of energy that create the electricity that helps fuel the electromagnetic um, frequency and that's how we can connect into, um, into the grid. Just got it chilled up. You have a question? Hi, ladies. Um, you know, Dr. We know this. Well, we get it. We know this. 
Yes. What so did she the say? Yes. So her, her question and her statement is that we've been saying that this is possible, so how do you actually do it? And the best answer divine gives is you do it for yourself. You become the example and the teacher. You can stand up on a uh, platform and you can speak all day long, but if you aren't doing it yourself, then they go, oh, yeah, yeah, those are words. But you teach through example. That's your best way to teach. So the best way to help humankind is to uh, take responsibility for what's in this physical space. And when you heal yourself and then other people see that you heal and you're holding a higher light, they emulate to do the same thing because they say, she did it. I can do it. That's how I got where I am. I would see something or... Um, have the wisdom put in, and I would think, well, I can do that. So as soon as you um, voice that um, commitment that you can do that, you then start to create the way, either learning a technique to bring you up or just, you know, you can trust. But the fastest way to give humanity is to heal yourself. And then for me, like the... Ho, ho, pono, pono. I love that. So what is, um, paraphrase, phrasing, um, what is out of balance and needs healing in me that is reflected in humanity and that which is in humanity which is reflected in me that needs healing, then you put that in your prayer. So Can I make it a little easier? Yes. In your body, you have a standing wave. What's your standing wave? Your chakra system. Can you spin it one way or can you spin it another way? Your chakra system is a vortex. You could either spin it clockwise or counterclockwise. What did I tell you? A temple, if you are a temple, you're a temple because you could spin your chakra clockwise, counterclockwise. Now, the earth is a motor. So when you stand on that motor and spin it clockwise or counterclockwise, you bring energy in. Anybody know what way you spin it to make energy go in? Come on, I've been teaching this. Counter. Counterclockwise. I've been teaching this stuff for years. <laughs> yeah. You spin it yeah. counterclockwise. Brings energy from the sky right down through that obelisk. When it hits that lip on the obelisk, it pulses out. So it comes in through the top, it comes down, pulses out. That's a counterclockwise vortex. That's a down shoot. Now, to make it go up shoot, what way do you spin it? All medicine wheels are what direction? So if medicine wheel was put up in a little big horn, Yellowstone is a volcano. It's pulling energy under that volcano, up through that clockwise medicine wheel, up to the atmosphere. Can you see that? Because it's clockwise. That's what people have to understand. I don't know why people can't understand. Counterclockwise, clockwise. Clockwise is up, counterclockwise is down. <laughs> and you can spin your own chakra system. But intent is 95% what you do. And Absolutely. you have to, Bruce said, when he, we went out, I took Bruce out to the Federal Communication Center, and we did the Holy Grail Vortex to get rid of the smoke. Now, what did we do? Can, you, can somebody explain what we did? What we did is we got into our heart chakra. We did the, we took one deep breath got into our crown, our vortex coming down, took another deep breath, got into our heart energy. Now we got two chakras. What way are they spinning? Clockwise? Counter counterclockwise. From the uh, down. Oh, down, counterclockwise. Then we got into our base chakra, which is our willpower. 
And what direction is that? Clockwise. So, and then we intended the Holy Grail vortex. We created a vortex over the old Federal Communications Center that in less than 12 hours took all the smoke out of this area and it hasn't returned since. Does that make sense to you people? And this is what you have to learn to do. I can't hear you. Where was the um, federal oh. Yeah. oh, where was it? In the, my dad was a doctor, and I was eight years old. He took me out there. They were Cubans. Yeah. It's eight. It's about t ten miles. There's a road called M40 between here and Hopkins. I mean Hamilton and, and Allegan. About two thirds of the way down that road, there's a church. And across from that church is the old federal communication system. Now, our E3 pyramid, which we have built over the 40 years that we've been working, is just about nine miles from the center of that. So we are using the E3 pyramid from the old. And what we did is we, see, when you get into your frontal lobes, you could go forward and backward in time. TDA lingo taught, uh, taught you that. You get into your frontal lobes. We have a glia braid, an electrical braid. And you get into your frontal lobes. You can go backwards and forwards in time. So we got into our frontal lobes. We set a vortex. 1937 was the year I was born. So we went back to the frequency of the, of the air in 1937 and created the Holy Grail vortex and asked that that frequency be brought into this and clear the smoke away. And apparently it did because we haven't had any smoke since then. Okay? And coming back to intent, so it comes back to the clearer your heart is, the higher frequency your intent and your prayer will be. When you're in the lower frequencies and you have, um, you're kind of stuck in the muckety muck of day-to-day um, -day life, your thought process and your energy um, will be a lower frequency. And the more you clear and the more you move into your heart chakra, you'll find that your prayers go from survival to grace and to healing. So it comes back to personal responsibility and your intent. So the clearer you become in your emotional and physical body, the clearer and the more powerful your prayers are going to be and the energy behind it. And moving into that divine, unconditional love and trusting that you have the ability to do so and then trusting that you are because we already are there. We just are remembering that. The Holy Grail Vortex has its own protection. One time I had two people in the house. They were going to, they were going to do the Holy Grail over where the... Uh, People do the walking around the black stone. What, where's that? Me Mecca? They were going to put the Holy Grail vortex over Mecca. You know how long it took them to get sick? In seconds, they were rolling on the floor with diarrhea and throwing up. Did they ask for permission? No. You don't have the right. This is a planet of free will. And if you violate free will... The Holy Grail Vortex will take you to that point. That's just a warning. It's a very powerful tool, and that's why we always say you have to ask permission. Once you do your make your intention, then you ask permission to put that prayer and that frequency into the earth that runs along the grid. And it may not be that your intention is for the greatest good of humanity and the planet. So that's why the Holy Grail Vortex where we have two um, vortexes that rotate each direction because the elementals and divine beings then fine tune the frequency of our intention before it sends it out um, to humanity along the grid. So it's a little um, check and balances that was built into the Holy Grail um, vortex. But it, it is um, really important that your prayer is for the greatest and highest good and not for your personal Gain. Um, your personal gain. Now I'm going to remind you of a story. Jesus went to a, a, a wedding 
there wasn't enough wine. So he walked up. His mother asked him. He didn't do it for his own intent. His mother said, they don't have any wine. Change it. So what did he do? He used the frequency of his chakra system and asked that the water be changed in frequency to wine. The end. What did he say after that? Does anybody know what Jesus said to us? These are greater things you can do also. So you see how you get into your chakra system? And this is why and how we can control the earth motor. Does that make sense to you people? Now we are being faced with, because as, Bra as Brian Busco said, all the negative entities, ETs, we have a control of the planet since 2020. It is our job to clean it up. If we don't clean it up, we can let the Illuminati put smoke out there, create fires, do whatever they want, and destroy our atmosphere. But we have the power to save our atmosphere. And does anybody here think they can't do that? Do you have the knowledge to do it? That's all you need. How much more time do we have before? Anybody have any questions? Yes, you want to stand up and say it? What did he say? He's going to repeat it. Yeah. Well, in your story earlier, Mary, you talked about protecting a, uh, I believe it was a cathedral in Europe, and calling in the Knights Templar, and they're using their shields to help. Did they spin a vortex? In which way did they do it, or do it in either directions? And I presume these were energetic Templars from history all the time. Do you know who the Knights Templar are? They're here to protect free will. And yes, they, they have control of the grid. Now, when uh, the first time I used the Holy Grail Vortex, I saw they first group were on horses and it went around counterclockwise. That brought the energy in. The second group around it brought in another group of counterclockwise vortexes. So you think of the bell tower. There, here come the horses, counterclockwise, counterclockwise. What's the next direction? Clockwise and clockwise. So you created a standing wave. When you take a tornado down out here, we've had tornadoes attack us, come across the lake. Right, Gail? Do you yes, ma'am. And we took it down. It was, we could see the spout coming across um, the water. And they could see it on the, the radar, on the TV, in the house. We had um, police and um, ETs waiting for um, um, the hit to take place. And five of us came out, and we did the Holy Grail Vortex. And because like cures like, we created that standing column or wave and we diffused the, um, the tornado just before, uh, it was about halfway through um, across the lake when we diffused it, and it just disappeared. And the people on TV said, there was a tornado there. It just disappeared. <laughs> but you, you can't put two tops together. Can you visualize that? Is this helping you? You can't put two tops together. When you got two tops together, they cancel each other out. That's why you say like cures like. So you get a top going this way and a top going that way. And you snap it together, it dissipates. And Does I that, will, that answer your question? I will add a little to that. So when we create the Holy Grail Vortex, we're actually creating um, a toroidal field. And that's what all life is about. Every um, vital life force is a toroidal field, and there's just microcosms and macrocosms of that energy. And that is, um, the energy is going um, clockwise and counterclockwise at the same time, in halfway in, up, 
and down and over and halfway from down and around and up. It's working all at the same time in all directions, and that creates a, um, a toroidal field. So when the we were in the cathedral and the Knights Templars came in to assist us, we all as a group created a toroidal field that took that prayer and it amplified it and it moved it out along the grid. And the strongest uh, toroidal field that we have in our physical bodies is in our heart. And the clearer your heart is, the more powerful and more strength you have to access from that. So in that state of unconditional love, you create the toroidal field. Every time it beats, it creates a toroidal field and it creates the fire symbols um, in Hebrew as well. So it's very powerful. God's name is written in our heart. Every time our heart beats, the frequency of the beat creates the fire sing, uh, symbols, and it spells um, I am. You know how hard it was to teach this? People I've been teaching it since 1996, and people would come to the sisterhood meeting we're not going to do the Holy Grail Vortex, are we, all day long? Because <laughs> it was hard to teach this. Once you understand energy, it's not hard. It's learning energy and how you can um, manipulate in a good way, manipulate and transmute and transform because we're alchemists. So alchemists mean that you can shift energy. So a better word for instead of manipulation is shifters. So you can shift energy if something is not working. You shift the energy and move it out, transform it, transmute it into something else. So everything is energy and you don't remove any energy. You just shift the way it looks. And you do that with your prayers in heaviness. You do that um, in your body when you're um, with the herbs that you take and the essential oils and the different frequencies that you infuse. It's important to keep your mind too healthy. So what goes into your body is going to affect your mind and the energy um, in your body. So I will um, ask that you be really conscious about what's going in and eat as pure and clean as you can. Um, that will generate good chemicals in the brain to um, help the connection to the body. And um, also uh, your essential fatty acids are really important because that's how um, the um, myelin sheath um, that wraps the nerve endings and the glia brain send their signals through the myelin sheath of, through the body. So make sure you have good, healthy fats. I want to ask him a question. Yes. What is a simple statement that shows what alchemy is? Anybody want to tell me? Like cures like. Use the same frequency to destroy or add to the same frequency. Now, I'm a homeopath, and they reduce everything to frequency. Your Hertzian wave goes like this. So if you want to strengthen it, you add an herb that has that same frequency, okay? If you want to destroy it, you will use an herb that has a counter frequency. So the statement, like cures like, can be understood. And usually you can determine what like cures like is by muscle testing. If you want to take something and you don't test strong for it, it's not good for the body. Now you have two types of brain matter. You have gray matter and white matter. 15% of your brain is gray matter. Unfortunately, medicine only works with gray matter. You have white matter, which is the glia brain. Okay? It is like the wires in your house. So you can add taste, touch, and smell. Activate the glia brain. You have an olfactory bulb. You smell it. You know, people go around smelling all kinds of homeopathic oils and homeopathy. They don't realize they're taking it when they smell it. So you don't want to just go around and smell everything. You want to muscle test yourself first. Taste, you have a parotid gland in here, which is a frequency generator. When you chew your food, that activates 
like a computer chip through your body so how to digest your food. And of course, if you look at the bottom of your foot, you have acupressure points. And you have a whole road bed on the bottom. So taste, touch, and smell activate the glia brain. And the glia brain is the only way you can heal your body. What happens with medicine is they take it, give you a pill. And that pill blocks the glia brain to get a desired effect. But that is not a way to heal. That's not balancing it. And you can't get that across to the doctors. Does that make sense to you? How much more time do we have? About five minutes. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Yes. Mary, when you were talking about the, um, the three men that wanted to go over to Mecca and uh, do a holy grail over the... They did it. They sat in my living room and did it. Oh, they did it from there. But it's... you also said you have to ask permission. Uh, could you give more detail? Is that is that almost like taking something before the Lord for an answer? Or how, how would you... I don't know, but I ask my body if I'm going to take this herb. Same as a, a mother asked me, what, wanted me to send a homeopathic remedy to her daughter. I said, do I have permission to do that? You, you can't do anything unless you have permission. You have to ask. And usually when you ask, I ask somebody, can I do this? I get a yes or a no. It's just something I hear. And when and she says somebody, she's asking divine. She's asking God all that is. So, um, and because we are electrical beings and intuitive, you really will get a yes or no answer. So if you get a no that your intention that you're going to put out, you get a no, please honor that because it will kick you back. Um, because the imbalance it's not creating harmony but if you um, word it and your prayer is for the greatest good and it is in divine's orchestration for the greatest good it will allow you to proceed and um, and that way you get the yes answer and then you proceed I'm going to say what Frank said I have a friend in Florida who takes down hurricanes now if he asks permission to can I go after this hurricane? If it's man-made, usually they can take them down. If it's nature-made, they can't. So nature just tells him he can't do that. But if it's man-made, can you imagine a 200-mile wide hurricane going right straight across Florida? What would it have done to Florida? See, a lot of people, he had a lot of religious men that he works with. And this, and the Temple of Saqqara has saved this planet so many times. That just, it's just a beautiful operation, and it's only been a handful of people that have done it. And I don't know how many years Gail and I and Steve and other people Jeff. have tried, what? Jeff, yep. Have tried to teach this information. Now, in 2020, no, night. 1900, when, were, when did the meteor fall in Lake Allegan? Um, 2019. 2019, okay. 2019, a meteor fell in Lake Allegan. And I say we are the Brotherhood of On. Everything that Allegan, and we met, Michael, I'm going to have him talk about the Ark of On, right? Yes. The uh. We are the Brotherhood of On. Now I'm jumping around. So please lead me back if you have a question. There was an exodus out of Egypt. Tuchadamon's wife, to Scotia, took people up to Scotland. But Moses brought people out of Egypt. They were not the slaves. Agdaten had built a city called Amarna, and he had taken all the oilers, all the intelligence, all the lawyers, all the doctors into Amarna. And when his father died 20 years later, he the, the, went down to Luxor. It would be like putting a bar across the Catholic Church's door. Pretty soon all the Catholics would rebel. Well, that's what happened. 
They all attacked Amarna. Now the reason why, what what the the uh, pharaohs became military men, Seti I was the first military man. He invited all the men of Ptah. They were the rods that could control the grid, that could control the arcs, and he cut their throats. And this is in Om Seti. So he killed them all. So Moses was trained because he was an illegitimate child of, of, of Solomon and Queen Hipsheet suit. He was straight with the Rod of Ptah. And the arcs were the rudders of the electrical systems to make gold, to run the pyramids. So Moses took the arcs out of Egypt and sure, Seti I's son, Ramesses II, chased him. But that was not because they were escaping. It was because of the situation. And that's the history of Egypt. It's a little different than what most people understand. And where did I get that information? It was given to me. I asked, and it was given to me. And that's all you have to do. The designer of the pyramid said, anytime you want to ask a question, you just go down to level, take three deep breaths, get into your chakra system, and ask. And usually you'll get an answer. Okay? But unfortunately in Egypt, they've chiseled all the names off the faces, and they've rearranged. Uh, Daniel Kolos, who was an Egyptologist, came one day and said, Mary... It's like somebody threw the papers of history up in the air and they just scrambled them. And then they went ahead and took all the faces off the statues so they really couldn't follow the history. And that's where we're at. But there was never any pyramid builders taking an exodus out of Egypt. Okay? Do you have any, any, any questions? Any more questions? So throughout the rest of the day, um, and the rest of the weekend, we will be coming back and sharing um, how to access the grid and move into your frontal lobes. And later on, um, at some time throughout um, the weekend, then we'll go into more accessing the frontal lobes and the different ways that you can do that. And I'll walk you through a few of those. Um, just stay tuned to the schedule because it will be worked in somewhere. Um, and we'll just keep you um, informed.